Where is the um, another night of? To be honest, I can't wait till this Australian Open's bloody finished, so I can get some sleep. Um, <coughs> so before we get into it, let's just clear up a few things. Um, Magdalenette beat Carolina Pliskova. Always going to happen. And I'm going to come back to Magdalenette um, because she's the perfect. Um, uh, so I'm just navigating something. I'm going to get back to Magdalenette because she's a perfect example of being inspired by a teammate, being inspired by Iga Sviatek, who obviously has won, is it three Grand Slams now or two? A couple anyway. She's definitely won two. And uh, now it's a case of, um, how that inspiration works, how Sviatek has inspired her country in comparison to, well, forget comparison, don't need to compare, it's just how, how you know, she's brought on her own teammates. And Magna Lynette, Magna Lynette is a perfect example. But I'm gonna come back to her when I talk about Rana. Now, Rana is now the, um, the last British player in the main in main draws. I'm not counting doubles. I don't count doubles. Doubles for me. <coughs> it's a great sport, but it's a different sport in terms of the the pressures it has. Singles is where it's at, which is why the prize money is more on singles. The kudos is more on singles, and. We know more about singles than we do about doubles. So I know there's, I think, Ella McDonald might still be in the doubles, if not playing now, I'm not sure. Uh, but in terms of main draw, uh, Rana is the last girl we've got in the main draw. And if you watch how Rana plays, she's not a front foot player, she's not, an aggressive player. She's not a player who you'd say you're excited to watch. She doesn't play huge points from the back of the court. Big, massive winners finding corners, although she has found a few. Now, let me explain something to you. Is that The reason why she's the last British girl standing, she's had an opportunity and she's taking it. She's keeping going with it. She's, 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 you know, she's, you can never tell whether she's enjoying it or not enjoying it because she doesn't show much emotion. She might do the odd fist pump and stuff, but she doesn't show much emotion. But her game style is probably 60 40 defense. No, probably even more than that. But let me explain something to you. Because I talk to parents all the time. And, you know, some parents will say, you know, oh, look at my daughter's forehand, it's amazing. Don't, you know, da 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 da. And it is. You look at the forehand, it's a great forehand. Look at massive serve. Oh, it's great. Well, can't win a match for love nor money. And that's because, yes, they might, if there was a competition to say, oh, who wins the best point? It's great. You know, they'd win that. It's a great point. Oh, fantastic serve, fantastic forehand. You know, oh, my daughter plays, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, aggressive tennis. It's great. It's really good. But, there's two ways of looking at it. I want Sabalenka, so I'm, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna do the comparison. Sabalenka, who won against Donna Vekic, and Magdalenette, who won against um, Karolina Piskova. Now, here's the two conundrums. 
Sabalenka, Parahita, everything is full beans, Sharapova style, everything is, although Sabalenka has got much, much, much better touch, feel, movement, footwork, understanding, moving, moving of the opponent, taking advantage, um, take risks but at the right time. So like the great John Barnes said, um, uh, defend and attack. You got to hold and give, but do it at the right time. Defend and attack. The great John Barnes said that. Still, it's still, it's still true to this day. And learn from it. Do not try to discount it, and just, and just uh, um, uh, minimize it as it's nothing. You have to be able to defend, even if you're a power player. You have to be able to defend. That comes from speed, agility, quickness, and the ability to move around the court. What's his BMW doing? Um, and this is my point when I talk to parents about, oh, my daughter's, you know, a baseline, aggressive baseliner. What's one of them? <laughs> I still, still want to know. I want someone to explain to me what an aggressive baseliner is. Because uh, Sabalenka today, I don't think there's a player who hits as big as Sabalenka. Probably Pliskova. This is where the conundrum comes. Sabalenka today was moving around the court, getting into the net for angles, uh, hitting drive. Yes, if you can hit a winner from standing behind the baseline or on the baseline, great. But She's realised, after all these years of playing tennis, that is not going to win you the matches when you get to the latter stages of tournaments. It might, it might win you the matches in the early stages when you're playing Harriet Darts and play, players, you know, um, lo, lo, players that are ranked lower down. But when you're playing top eight, top ten, top twenty, top thirty players. You can't just stand there and just whack it. It's, it's, it's a full sense of security. And that full sense of security is perpetuated by British coaches. Many of them. And I'll tell you why. And that's because what they do, they know how to impress parents. So they'll get the pupil behind the baseline. Yeah. And they'll feed, remember, most British coaches were excellent players or really good players. They can put that ball on an ant's arse. They can put that ball on a fly's wing. So they can put that ball in your, in your hitting zone. Easily, regularly, every, every ball. This is where the problem comes. So the parents looking over the balcony go, wow, look at my daughter's forehand. Wow, look at her backhand, look, oh, look, she's hitting it deep and accurate and oh my gosh. That's because the ball she's receiving is A, a fantastic ball for her to be able to return it so it's manufactured. And B, she's hardly moving, she ain't moving nowhere, you're not playing the way that he would play if he was playing against a man. He's feeding her a ball that he knows that she can return. That's my point. That's the point. And it seems today that Rana has this, I'm not going to say perfect balance, but a good balance of coming in, moving, showing speed and agility. Although, for me, she could be faster, could be quicker. But she's 17, 18, she's transitioning. She hasn't had the quality and the upbringing and the investment of Coco Golf or Linda Fruvatova, or she hasn't had the investment, she hasn't had the um, expertise of someone like me in terms of speed, agility, quickness, uh, understanding the ball, understand. So without any of those expertises, she's played.
playing a game that suits her style. 60-40, 70-30, defend and attack. You attack at the right times, you move the ball, you put the ball uh, into places that are gonna make it difficult for the opponent. Now, I don't mean to dig anyone out here, but watch that game, Rana versus a pretty good German girl for, for you know, a pretty good German girl. She's not Mickey Mouse in any way. So, a pretty good German girl. Then watch um, uh, Michelle Dishengirava versus whatever her name is, Mag Magalina, Mag Magina from um, second round of qualifying in Sunderland. If you can, if it's able to watch. And this is what I mean about crap. One's crash bang wallop tennis. Just hit anything anywhere. No understanding of moving the opponent. No understanding of building the point. No understanding of of how to uh, manufacture the point. Of how to uh, move your opponent around. No patience. No taking your time. No understanding of tennis. Just I'm gonna whack this. Just whack it. Whack it. Big serve. Can a whack a return? Can a. It, it's 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 it's. It, it doesn't take um, any. What's the word I'm looking for? Consideration of how to win a point, and if it goes in and it's a winner, fantastic. If it doesn't, it hits the and it goes out or the net. It's just unfortunate. That's not tennis. That's not how you win tennis matches. And you've got to be able to dig in. You've got to be able to have a plan B, plan C. You've got to be able to work out how to move the ball, how to how, how to cater with the ball, how to look after the ball, how to how to move it around. Make the ball your friend. That ball is your friend. These are all coaching, you know, show speed, agility, quickness. If you are going to go full whack, you got to have perfect footwork. You've got to have amazing footwork. You've got to be able to move speed around the court. You've got to show agility. You've got to show quickness. All of these things I didn't see. Or... Oh, I just remembered something. All those things I didn't see. So these things need to happen if you, in order for you to progress any further. Otherwise, you're just wasting your money. You're wasting your money and you're wasting your time. Because there's girls out there who are just too good. And I mean, I don't even mean top girls. Average girls are just too good. Because... We're, you know, you've got pff, Romanian girls who will, who are 90-10 defensive. How are you going to break them down? And they, 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 they stand five foot behind the baseline and they get everything. So unless you're just going to drop shot every single time, you won't beat them because they're just so far behind the baseline. Or you got the really attacking ones who stand so close, close to the baseline that unless you're you can hit deep and force them back or hit with an angle and put them in trouble yeah they just return everything and 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 they turn they turn your shot into their attacking shot and this is what i'm saying tennis is like is such a game of chess tennis is you've got to read the game and if you can't read the game you have got no chance no chance. That's why I look at physicality. The speed, agility, quickness of a player or a girl or whoever. <coughs> so I look at that. But I also look at what they're reading. Are they reading the game? Now, yes, you could play. You could play um, a high, a very highly ranked girl and have a close match. The reason being 
is because that highly ranked girl, whoever it is, say someone like Katie Bolter or Heather Watson or or Tara Moore or Jodie Burridge or Sarah Beth Gray. So you could play any of those girls I've just mentioned and you will play much better than you will against any junior. You will, you will play better, you will look better, you will look like you're a much better player. For one reason, that, that better player that you're playing against will give you excellent balls, will give you nice deep balls so that they can trade, they want to trade, they, 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 there's, they are programmed, they're conditioned. So maybe not so much Katie Bolter, she will try and hit you off the court, first step tennis. She will play first strike tennis. But the other girls, definitely, definitely Sarah Beth Gray, Jodie Burridge, those types of girls, they'll want to build the point. They'll want to they'll uh, build it slowly but surely, but they'll want to build the point. This is my issue. This is this this is what I'm talking about when I say this is what I'm talking about when I say you've got to understand tennis. Do you know tennis? Do you watch tennis? Do you know players? Do you know coaches? Do you know um, what other girls are doing around the world? Do you know? Have you been to these academies? What do you know about tennis? What do you know about the history? Um, do do you you know? I always say, if you're a small girl, watch Justine and then study her. Watch how she plays tennis. Watch how she moves the ball. Watch how she beats Serena Williams, one of the biggest, no, the biggest hitter in tennis. She beat her like six times in Grand Slams at various points of the Grand Slam. Why? How did she do it? How did she beat Serena? This five foot five, five foot four, girl from Belgium she just worked her out she read the game and it was a younger Serena whose game was built on hitting you off the court that's what Serena's old game was built on and to some extent the, the, the latter stages of her game was built on that but she just got better at other things got more efficient at other things and what else happened is other girls worked out how to beat Serena in terms of playing at her own game. So when Bianca Andrescu beat her in the US Open final, yeah, she she played Serena at her own game. It was it was a win-win. If she lost, she won. If she won, she won. So Andrescu, that's exact same with Naomi Osaka. If she lost, she won. If she won, she won. Because it's all about hitting the ball. The, the, that, that game was that game was about playing Serena at her own game. That's all it was about. And they were young, they were 17, 18, 19 in one case. And that's how they did one. It's Tesla. Cool. Um, so, you know, well done Rana. Really, you know, really great stuff from Rana. She's done a fantastic job. And you know, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be pretty. No one says, it doesn't say Rana W, but didn't play very well and the girl made a lot of errors. It doesn't say that. That's not how, that's not how tennis works. It, 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 it will say, it just says Rana W. Yes, man got his space. Yes, my brother. Yeah, and Miss got in before me. So, listen. Well done, Rana. Excellent job today. Uh, the second set was a bit tough. Few errors, few nets. <coughs> a few nets crept in. <clears throat> but, ultimately, you won through. And um, in winning through, you... Um, uh, you won through, and in winning through, you know, you've you done well. you done well, and, you know, you're into the next round, so onwards and upwards. For me, in terms of improvement, I'd just, like, I if I was Rana's coach, I'd like to see her move a little bit quicker around the court. 
use a little bit more speed and movement around the court, use a little bit more um, just faster footwork, just be, be a percentage quicker, be a percentage faster. And for me, that, that would be how you could really see some dividend in, in your tennis, in your um, in what you're trying to achieve in terms of winning the match. Because the second set, you allowed her back in, you allowed her, she was a big hitter, so you allowed her to, to win some points. Um, ultimately, you let her commit suicide, you let her, she hit enough errors for you to capitalise. And, you know, but you got to be in the, in the match for that to happen. And that's what you did. You was in the match and you made it happen. So, you know, well done, Rana. And I'm looking forward to whenever the next match is, whether it's tomorrow or the next day. It might be tomorrow, I don't know, because I'm sure the final has to be on Saturday, doesn't it? So if the final's on Saturday, quarter, semi, final. So today's Wednesday, so it'd be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Quarter semi final. Okay, that'd be mad. That'd be mad. That'd be mad. So listen. Oh yeah. So I didn't finish what I was saying. So yeah. So there's the conundrum. So you've got Sabalenka beat Vekic. Of the two, Vekic is the more defensive player. You got Magdalenette beat Pliskova. Magdalenette is the more defensive player. So you've got one defensive player. Beating an attacking player, and you've got an an attacking player beating a defensive player, so it's kind of like flipped round. Interesting, isn't it? How 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 that kind of um how that dynamic is. Uh, but it goes to show that there's no one way to do it. However, the attacking player, which was Sabalenka. I'd say the reason why she won well, it wasn't because she just stayed back and and tried to hit big, was because she was moving, speed, agility, quickness, power, angles. You know, I still think R Ribikina's the girl to beat. R Ribikina, whew, she can play some big tennis. And I think against Azarenka, Azarenka, the reason why she's won Grand Slams is because she has that combination of defend and attack. Defend, attack, counter attack, whatever you want to call it. Counter punch. Defend, attack, counter punch. Defensive attacking, counter punch. It's not, I am not, I am one style. You've got to be a bit of all. Yo, look at that. Looks like I've got a scar, doesn't it? Yo, looks like I've got a scar, bro. Right, so listen. Guys, make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Well done, Rana. Keep going. I can't wait till this Australian Open's finished. I, I can sleep through the night. Chicken and rice. See you later, guys. Bye.